to the select board meeting of September. Nope, September. Wow. Whoa. Summer went by quick, didn't it? It's actually July 18th. Get rid of the heat. I think so. Um, so July 18th, 2018. And we'll call this meeting to order. And our first thing is the consent, um, consent agenda. And I'll do payroll first warrants, uh, minutes of April 25th. Warrants of AP 1852-S, AP 1853, AP 1902, PR 1852, PR 1853, PR 1901-T, and PR 1901-S. And I think I'll just call for um, a hold on those. Oh, and we can do the uh, state primary warrant also, which is scheduled for September 4th, 2018. Okay. Motion to uh, approve other than the police department weapons. And the library to see library. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And I'll just take uh, Karen Curley first. I'll go out of order because that one won't take very long. Karen has uh, handed in her resignation for the library. Um, she has been a library trustee for the past 11, uh, 11, 11 years. Um, and she has done a lot over there in securing grants and updating the library over the years. Uh, we certainly thank her for her years of service. Um, she'll be missed in the town of Hadley. She'll be moving. Um, I believe from what I hear through the grapevine, she's moving to the Cape. So uh, we wish her well and thank her for her service. And not happy to get her resignation, but that does happen. So we wish you best, Karen. And now for the big night agenda, why everybody is here at this <laughs> room, uh, we have the Hadley Police Department appointments. And I'll turn it over to Chief Mason. <laughs> We have uh, three promotions for you folks tonight. Um, the first person you'll see seated closest to me is Thomas Douglas. You may recognize him. We hired him um, uh, just a few months ago as a special here. Uh, Tom is a resident of South Hadley, and he is a special police officer. He was hired in January. He is currently nearing uh, completion of our field training program. Uh, Tom was a, a special police officer in South Hadley and West Springfield and has been employed as a full-time dispatcher for South Hadley Police Department since 2012. He comes highly recommended by his peers in South Hadley as well as Chief Parentella, who I've spoken to personally, and is highly regarded by his Hadley Police Department co-workers. Uh, Tom has been doing a fantastic job with us. He um, has been working as much training hours as he possibly can to get completed. Uh, and he will be, uh, depending, on, depending upon your vote, will be going to the academy hopefully in October this year. And then we'll get him back as a full-time officer after that. So I would like to recommend Tom Douglas to be promoted from special to full-time police officer for the Hadley Police Department. Okay, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Tom. Congratulations. Welcome to the force full-time. Thank you much. Glad to have you. Seated next to for Tom was if you want to shift those yes. <laughs> So the next two um, are um, especially important to me. Um, there's some firsts that uh, that we've done in, in our agency. Uh, Jesse Green first. Uh, Jesse is a, uh, also a resident of South Hadley. Uh, he has worked for our police department since 2010. He was formerly with the Northampton Police Department previous to that. He is one of our most senior officers within the de department, and he was selected to be the department's first detective. During his tenure here in Hadley, he has been assigned as a corps liaison, department firearms instructor, field training officer, evidence officer, and as a member of the Hampshire and Franklin Anti-Crime Task Force, which is a collaboration of state, county, and local police officers who are tasked with assisting in major case investigations. 
He is an extremely dedicated member of our agency. He is very well respected by his peers. Uh, Detective Green also has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Northeastern University. Um, tonight, I would like to recommend that Detective Jesse Green be promoted to Detective Sergeant for the Happy Police Department. Motion to approve. Sergeant. I'll vote with Aye. It certainly is an honor to have you bump into that rank. Thank you. Appreciated you working here in Hatton. I do appreciate it. Jesse, if you would mind standing. Lieutenant position for the Hadley Police Department has been vacant for more than 15 years uh, when my first and only lieutenant, Mike Maeski, had uh, retired. For one reason or another, all of those years passed without the position being filled. When I took over as chief almost four years ago, I had several conversations with the board about filling some type of second in command position. I didn't just want to promote somebody to lieutenant because that wouldn't solve the issue of having a second in command of the agency who could run the department from front to back. The majority of the past four years, we've been working hard to build the proper foundation and an appropriate rank structure so that whenever the promotion was made, it would be an appropriate fit for our agency. And so this board, after careful consideration, allowed me to enter into impact bargaining with the police union so that we could remove the lieutenant position from the union and do with it exactly what I just described. This board also took great pains in assisting with the crafting and the adjustment of an all-encompassing job description and an MOU to govern this position. I am grateful for your assistance. Over the course of the last several weeks, our department has undergone an intensive hiring process and promotional process to hire new special police officers, part-time dispatchers, and as you just saw, to promote officers to full-time and sergeant. The final step was to complete the promotional process for lieutenant. As many of you know, Mitch has lived in Hadley for a number of years and just recently moved about four miles north just into Sunderland where he lives with his wife and two children. He has been a full-time officer here since 2006 and was promoted to sergeant in 2015 where he was put in charge of all operations of the department. Mitch excels in this position and he multitasks the way that most of us handle singular tasks. Being in charge of the operations of an entire department, no matter how large or small, is fraught with struggles. Some days are good and some are trying. No one is perfect, but Mitch has shown the ability to bounce back from any mistakes he makes, own up to them, fix them, and move forward. That's what leaders should do. It was clear to the interview panel that Mitch had been preparing for this job for a long time now. In fact, about halfway through his interview, it actually felt like he was interviewing for my job, and I regretted that I had asked the chair of the select board to be on the panel. <laughs> I could not be more pleased with my entire supervisory staff and department. It is clear that they have a mission-first mentality, and that is exactly what I was looking for. They genuinely care for this town, this agency, and the fine people who make up both. I could not be more proud to work with this group of police officers. It is my honor to recommend Sergeant Mitchell Cook be promoted to the rank of the town. Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> and all those in favor. I, I <laughs> certainly will be served. <laughs> I'm not going to go to work. 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 I'm not going to go to work.
pleased with the um, officers that we have hired over the years, um, our chiefs, um, they've done a great job with both departments and um, I am just so honored to still be here um, and supporting them and I will continue to do that over the next few years that I'm still here or alive, one of the two. <laughs> I'm the oldest one so I can say that. Um, but I'm very proud of, of our public safety and our, our police and fire departments. So, um, thank you all for being there and this is a good time to also remember that these men and women put themselves at risk every single day and it's always important for us to support them in any which way that we can with, with safety and with uh, staff that we feel will help their jobs. So thank you everybody. <laughs> it wasn't just you. Who did that? Y'all want me to take a picture? You are most welcome. They got so much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're left holding the bag, Jane. <laughs> All right, so did uh, any any public comments tonight? <laughs> no, I'm good. Jen, anybody out there for public comments that had to come in? Is there anyone here for public comments? I don't think so. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, it's not until the 7.30 appointment, so... Uh, David, do you want to do a quick, quick report? Okay, so congratulations to me. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. The, uh, the, the main thing to report is that we're at the end of the fiscal year. We're doing the total of our FIA team. We're getting the last bill from the last award. So the last payroll done. Making sure that the revenues are in charge of that. working on the site plan for both the senior center and the associated good on the Memorial Library. Um, <coughs> the public hearing was continued to July 31st, and that will be in the basement of the senior center. Uh, a couple of outstanding issues that need to be resolved. Uh, Zaturka Park, this project is on hold, waiting for better weather to uh, 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 provide better conditions for the excavation that needs to happen. Town fire, town hall, and uh, DPW fire alarm systems; those are ready to go for August eighth. We'll have a check-in at department head meeting in order to make sure that we've done the coordination that we need to do. Um, I guess the only other updates uh, that are worth talking about are the uh, the. Conference committee at Boston finished their project of putting together the FY19 budget for the Commonwealth. So that was reported out, $42 billion project. A couple of good things for the town of Hadley. One is that we res we did get our $75,000 for uh, enhanced improvements over at the senior center. If you remember, we we worked with uh, Representative Seibeck to get that into the House budget that was approved by the House 
but then we lost our senatorial uh, representation and it was dropped from the Senate budget. It was reintroduced in the conference committee and I'm very happy to say that that it was honored. So That's great news. Uh, it's very good news and I just wanted to say thank you very much to John Seibeck who did yes. double duty both as a house rep and uh, our senator uh, in, in tempore, if you will. Uh, so that was very good. Got a little bit of extra money out of Chapter 70, uh, about $3,000, every bit helps. Looking for a cherry sheet because there are a lot of moving parts to any municipal state aid figure. So I want to make sure that we didn't lose ground. As soon as that is reported, I will let you know. Um, just a reminder to people that CPA funding requests are due on July 30th. Special town meeting articles are due to me by 4 o'clock on August 1st. And we have a number of community events coming up, one of which is the Hadley Farm Museum is making an effort to be more accessible. They're open on weekends. And there's going to be a polka mess on August 5th. Okay. And special town meeting on October 18th? Yep, special town meeting on October 18th. Whatever you feel we so, need, Andy, okay. it's, it's fine. Thank well, you. First of all, thank you for uh, having us here. Um, I don't know if you have had much of the background here, but the um, after-school program known as Hadley Kids Incorporated, uh, or run by Hadley Kids Incorporated, has approached Park and Rec to take over the program. And uh, they had talked to the school. The school felt it would be better managed by uh, a different entity. Uh, and the desire to keep it within the town uh, Park and Rec is uh, that's, uh, kind of in our wheelhouse mm -hmm. um, and keep it within our organization rather than uh, third party it to some private entity. So the long story short is um, they have approached us. The commission has voted to uh, take that on. They are very solid. Uh, they operate at a roughly uh, $17,000 a year surplus Yes. Um, and have um, banked about $100,000. Both of which are resources that Park and Rec is committed to uh, investing in the program. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we're talking with the treasurer and with David and, uh, and others on how we can um, uh, build the infrastructure to make sure that those funds uh, stay program focused. As far as additional staffing uh, from a town standpoint, we would increase our currently benefited employee from 30 hours to 40, uh, 40 which is 37 and a half. Mm -hmm. and, um, the current uh, EEC certified um, director of the program would move to a 19 hour a week position and be our on site coordinator. And we would maintain a lot of the staffing that was there that were uh, parents and the like that uh, put in the time. We believe the after school program is a very valuable resource to the town. Mm -hmm. It helps uh, support working families, both. Um, uh, in town and those that choice in. That, uh, choice is a very vital part to help support the school system this time. And we feel that Park and Rec would gain the um, benefit of having um, uh, you know, facilities for which we can operate out of. Um, we're already providing uh, after school programs, so we'd be in the mix and we'd be uh, um, back within our, uh, having direct contact with our entity with, again, uh, facilities to run programs. So, uh, in a nutshell, it's a win for the, uh, the community. We're able to maintain that program. It's a win for Park and Rec. Uh, we get a much needed facility and shot in the arm financially. And it is a win for the uh, school system as well. Um, and uh, if you talk to the administration there, they've been very strong advocates in pushing all uh, third party uh, programs to be run and coordinated through Park and Rec. So we appreciate all that support. <coughs> Will this need to go into, because with town meeting coming up, do we need to incorporate that into a 
article so that you can have a revolving fund. Exactly. Yeah. That has already begun, from what I understand, as far as okay. yes, so that's what I'm assuming should Yes, um, from what I understand, the intent is we have. I had spoken with the Justin, the accountant, regarding how we would need to set it up, and because the revolving would need to have the 12 months that it would need to be set up as a special and then changed to a revolving after so much amount of time. But all of that is going to be articles that we've spoken with David regarding putting those on the agenda. Right. So that's still in the process of, uh, we've got the language of the article pretty much worked out. It's just how much money are we talking about. So Ms. Lemberg and I have been working on the, the financial part of it. Sounds great. Sounds like a nice shot in the arm for Park and Rec for sure. It really is. It's but your program you has certainly been outstanding it too these been. past few years, and we thank you for your service for morning and after school programs. It's Absolutely. been wonderful. It, it has been. The, the program is just, it's been very successful, and it, we would just love to see it stay, stay yeah, exactly. within the town mm -hmm. um, because, like I said, it's, it's a very solvent program. Mm -hmm. I mean, every year we've been. It's so beneficial because more it families is. work today. In, it is. In and the early school and the mornings. and. Things exactly. like that, and after school too, because longer days for some parents. It is, and I mean, for me in particular, only because I mean, obviously, I, I work full time here. Mm -hmm. So, being that my child is at the elementary school without the after school, I would not be able to school choice him in because I live in Chicopee. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the benefit is that, you know, to Annie had suggested being able to market that really to people. We have this program that allows care until this time would hopefully encourage more school choice which I think is wonderful because it's a great school system. Yes. Couldn't, be, couldn't be happier. So Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, you guys are doing a great job as far as expanding and offering more opportunities. Um, growing up here, Park and Rock has been important to me, and so I'd like to you, know, you guys keep up what you're doing and expanding programs, and this is a, a great opportunity to bring something else on your Park and Rock so. I do. I think it's wonderful because I think that Jen will have a lot more visibility with parents um, being involved with the after school. She'll have a lot more access to resources and I think it will really promote the park and rec programs as well. I think it's really going to be a win-win for everyone. I think it's a great thing. And everyone on our board for the after school program is just really excited about it. So, Super. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Steve was reminding me that uh, enrollment is uh, as typically uh, is capped out and has a waiting list, so uh, it's not like the, uh, and there are ratios which have to be maintained and unfortunately it can be only expanded to a certain point, mm -hmm. but the, uh, the point of that message is that um, it's not for lack of, uh, of people signing up, there's, there's plenty of support for that. Group. Absolutely. There's plenty of need for it. There is. I mean, we have, you know, currently we can enroll up to 52 kids um, and typically we offer the program open to current uh, families first and siblings and then offer to an open enrollment if there's space left and with the open enrollment opening they we had to close it out within a week because it had already well it was already completely filled on all five days which is really just it's wonderful it's really exciting and obviously it varies during the year because of sports and things like that but typically on average or, you know the numbers are, they stay up there there's really a need for it so it's Great. It's and wonderful. Just out of curiosity, what do you charge per child? Is it going up? It's fourteen dollars per day. Uh, so it's one of the lower. Price it is programs. one of the lowest price programs. Um, the other thing was when we had kind of looked into a little bit more outsourcing outside of the town. A lot of the after school charge significantly more than that, and the whole purpose of the happy kids. Morning and, and afternoon. No, it's just for afternoon. Just but afternoon. most programs charge upwards of twenty to twenty-five dollars per day. So the whole purpose of the after school for Hadley Kids Inc. was to have, um, you know, reasonably priced after school care. Um, so our, you know, our prices really have not gone up drastically. But being that we've been on the positive as far as our, you know, our tuition exceeds all of our expenses, we never found a need. Um, well, it's a win-win because the parents are is. saving money, the park and rec's getting the revenue, so it's. It really is. It's, it's, it's a great thing. So we're really, we're really super excited about it. I think we all are. So. Anything else you need from us? No, we're just working through the article, uh, the article right now, and whether or not uh, any additional might have to come in. I think there's talk of one now, and then one in the spring for the, the um, uh, trust fund. Okay. The so we just appreciate your continued support. From sure. Yes. Sounds 
Okay. Is our, I mean, our intent is to obviously gift, um, dissolve the 501c3, which is the Hadley Kids Inc., and gift the monies into a trust for the parking rack for the advancement of the after school program along with other programming, obviously, for, for the town. So. And, and we've already clarified that there aren't any liabilities that we have to worry about with the 501c3. No, there, no. Is, there is no liability at this point and currently <coughs> our accounts have a little over $145,000 in it so it's been a really successful program and I think it's really going to be going to be great. Sounds so, good. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else you need? Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. that was done, so an amendment was done when uh, the project started. However, the property was purchased by Napoli, uh, so that voided out being able to do an amendment. The land license now needs to be redone completely under a new, under the new ownership. So uh, Jen has been working really hard on making sure all of the proper paperwork was filled out, notice to abutters, um, posting it in the paper, and then the public hearing tonight. And if you have any thoughts. <laughs> all abettors have, uh, we've received all abettors notifications and we did uh, hit the newspaper and um, we're all set to go. This is for 5,000 gallons of uh, propane storage. That's what's existing. Here. Existing is 4,000, but we they were unsure if they were going to need an additional tank at the time. Um, so that's why we, we had to cap it at the five. Okay. And I will say that the Texas Red House has agreed to go back to the three years that it, with the license was expired and to, to come current with the town with the license. Sounds good. Motion? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very much. Thank you so much. Jen. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, we're actually on the adult use of marijuana. Uh, not going to really take that up on it because uh, to vote tonight because of our other two board members not being here. Um, I know that we can do 20% of what we allow for our liquor licenses, but um, you have some uh, because of your job. Yeah. And. Uh, my, my only thought on this was uh, my purpose of putting it on the agenda was to make sure that we limit the number of licenses for the future uh, and, and make sure it's limited by town meeting vote rather than just relying on the ratio. But because it is uh, an important issue, like you said, uh, then Molly and Christian should be here for that. If we can do that for town meeting, is that better? Yeah, so we, we originally voted on this as If we could a percentage, yeah. Well, I think it's you're mandated by what you have for whatever your state, alcohol. Yeah, license. whatever state law mandated is what we were. So what 20 we percent of what we have for our liquor licenses are two. Um, you know, I'm a no vote for either one of those. So. Um, and my my understanding <laughs> is that in order to limit it further, it's the same thing as a ban, basically, right? Uh, on. Uh, the licenses so that way we have to get a town meeting vote to do limit it to 20 less than 20 percent i guess so just what right and then it would have to be followed up by a ballot vote as well so it'd be a two-step so i think for further discussion we'll move it to another that's fine to another I'm, agenda. I'm, I'm, yeah, that'll are we are on any time frame on this are we we, we are actually on a time frame the planning board uh, is going to dig into this issue on August 7th. So if we could uh, have a discussion with a decision on 
on August 1st, that would be enough time. And the decision would be to request that the planning board insert into the zoning bylaw the limitation on the number of licenses so that they know that that's the direction that the board is requesting them to go. I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so we can put that on. Yes, James. So how many liquor licenses are there in town and what would that mean currently and what number are you looking we for? We would only look for two. 20% of our liquor licenses would be two right. marijuana licenses. Okay. 20%. You want to to once? I want to go to none, but that's my choice. I'm, I'm for two. You are for two? Yes. Would be interesting. Yeah. What do you want to? From a revenue point yeah. and from the medical marijuana. It does help some. I know that. If we're going to move forward with it, I'd be in favor of limiting it to two or four less. Okay, so we'll put it on the August 1st agenda. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think we're just on the Steve Subaru that there's only um, notice of what he uh, is limited to per the planning board of how many vehicles he can have on the uh, what did they that's seven up? sisters property how many did they well have? he has quite a few over there right now so uh, he is now limited to uh, what does it say here say uh, 80. 80 it is 80 who changed that number what was that number so <laughs> just a little bit of history the mr uh, Steve Lewis Subaru was brought in to the board because it became clear that they were parking um, across the street in overflow. Uh, so the board gave them a certain time to catch up with their inventory and uh, that time came and passed and they weren't able to do that. So <coughs> Steve Lewis Subaru was brought in again and was instructed to go to the planning board who sent them to the zoning board of appeals. Zoning board of appeals granted them 80 cars, planning board uh, had a decision. We do not have that decision in front of us, but if you want to approve a subject to any order of conditions imposed by the planning board and the zoning board of appeals, that would be a way of resolving this issue. My understanding was that they were to do some soil testing for oil and gas spillage and that sort of thing, and the planning board put some uh, restrictions on them, they had to be done yearly or every other year, whatever it was, just to make sure that cars aren't leaking fluid there, and that was one of their conditions. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and my understanding is they didn't find anything there, so no issues. Um, so. I would hope not with no cars. I know, you would think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do we want to do it on the condition of the planning board? Would that be okay? I don't know, I know we had a discussion about the amount of cars there, too, and I don't think the, I, the lumber we were talking about. I think that we had left it to the planning board on the ZBA variance of what they could have there. And that's the number they came up with. From a past meeting, I think 80 was the maximum they had ever had at one time, but I think he said it was somewhere around 40 to 50 on average yeah. is what would be parked there. So I guess they're giving them a little bit of the clear. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve this um, with the exception of any um, restrictions or conditions set by the planning board. All right, I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Okay. All righty, and now we move on to the Senior Center Library and Fire Substation building project. I have nothing to report on the fire substation. <coughs> uh, Thursday uh, for an organizational meeting, and we will get back to you at the next meeting. Jane, you are up on the senior center and library. Oh, oh yes. I'm sorry. We do have Joe Boysford uh, has been uh, added to the um, volunteer. He's from the volunteer fire department, local business owner, uh, and he wanted to, in a lifetime, have the resident. He would like to be on the uh, substation fire uh, committee. And I think that would be a great addition to have him. We uh, were minus uh, three other people. So um, thank you, Joe, for stepping up and yeah. we'll approve that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, Jane. 
we're moving forward. We're very pleased. The planning board has scheduled a special meeting to hear our to bring us up to meeting all of their requirements on the 31st of July. And hopefully from there we will go out to bid and that would mean we'd be breaking ground this fall. All right. I do want to say, having watched it at home last night, I was not happy with the um, a couple of the planning board members asking questions that were not pertinent to the actual building site. I mean, how long will this building survive? How long will the <laughs> building survive? Um, what the Legion uh, agreement was, it has no bearing on what the library or the senior center is. That's a, a town, uh, we have sent a, our agreement to the Legion already. They have not responded to us. They sent it last week, I believe. So it was in their ball court to sign it and send it back to us. Um, and we'll have some conversation with uh, the commander. Um, I was not happy with them asking about the how we were going to plow it. That has no business of theirs whatsoever. We will take care of all town property, as we have done in the past for every other town property that we own. Um, it's not under their purview of how we will do that. It's under our purview as the select board. Um, the other issue was the uh, where the displaced uh, committees and organizations would go. Uh, you know, Again, that's not under we'll, we'll find a spot, mm -hmm. but it's not something that needs to be known prior to approving the project. Before the ball and chain hits the hooker school, we'll know where they're going to go. Right. So. But we were very pleased with the uh, cooperation we've had from some of the planning board members in moving forward with this and mm -hmm. understanding their needs. And we're very thankful for that. I, I thought it went much better last night than Much it did. better than the month before. It did. I just thought some of the questions were not pertinent to what the project was. Um, where I understand that, but we just want to go forward, please. Oh, I, I understand <laughs> that too, but like again, I'm going to say that it was not necessary for some of the comments. Not professional. Any other comments? No? All right. Moving forward. Keep moving forward. Yeah, is there any other announcements tonight from anybody? No executive sessions. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Aye. 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 Aye.